So I've chucked together 15 commonly asked questions that I've recognized I get asked quite a lot on a daily basis by many people. So I've put them all in one document. So if you're looking at starting in rent to rent, thinking, can you do this? Is this something you can do? How much time do I need? All of these floating questions in your mind. Stick around. This might just help you make up your decision. So number one, what is rent to rent? So rent to rent is a strategy that allows you to rent a landlord's property under a company-let management contract and then rent it out again. So essentially subletting, but it's legal because of the contract. So you've got a landlord's property, two strategies. You've got service accommodation and you've got HMO, right? So service accommodation is the Airbnb model. So you might rent a two-bed property from a landlord. That's perfect for Airbnb. Depends on location. Or you might rent a six-bed from a landlord. That's perfect for running it as a multiple house of multiple occupation, HMO, and rent it out to six individuals. And then whatever strategy you choose, the average profit is between six and a thousand pounds. So six hundred and a thousand pounds. That's it. That's rent to rent in a nutshell. So number two, how does rent to rent work? So you're going to set it up under a limited company. It may already be thinking, oh, I don't know how to do that. It's very simple when you know how. It's very simple. It won't take 10 minutes, 20 minutes max. But there's instructions everywhere now. You know, 10, 15 years ago to set up a business must have been very complicated. Maybe, I don't know. But now it's very simple. You've got a company's house. You've got a company's made simple. Loads of different places. It's fr almost free. It's about £12 to set up a business. So first things first, you're going to set up a limited company. Very easy. Don't let that put you off. Then essentially all you do is pick up the phone. You need to know what to say. So you're going to go on right move, look for, it depends what strategy you're more focused on, the service accommodation or the HMO, but essentially you can use right move for both. And what you're going to say to agents is you're looking for a property that you need to rent on a company let basis. Sometimes you might not use the word company let, that's, that can be a trigger word. So what you say needs to be thought of properly. Many different coaches have different ways of talking to agents, but essentially if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. Okay. It's, it's really as black and white as that. You can beat around the bush and come up with all these fancy ways of speaking to agents, but they recognize it. They're not stupid people. If they do company let, they do company let. If they don't, they don't. It's as simple as that. Don't waste time convincing them. So, you're now speaking to agents and you're wanting a property on a company let basis. So essentially you're going to go on a viewing, then you're going to come home. You're going to do your due diligence. That can be spare room. That can be Airbnb. That can be property Intel network, all of these types of different platforms to do your due diligence. Again, sounds confusing now, but when you know how, and you've got the training, it's quite simple. Then you're going to make an offer to the, the, the estate agent. They're going to pass it over to the landlord they either reject it or accept it. You enter negotiations or it's done. It's a done deal. Let's assume it's a done deal. So you've got a property. It's a bit run down. It needs a lick of paint, feature walls, you know, things like this, the lamp, the clock on the wall, make it look presentable that you can put it online and attract either tenants or guests. That's it. That's rent to rent. That's how it works. So it's viewing them, making offers, negotiating, contracts, getting it live. Okay, that's essentially the process in a nutshell. One thing I will add to that is the due diligence is the most important step. Cock that up and you risk everything in your business. The most important stage in rent to rent is the due diligence on both strategies. So whether you're getting trained or not, make sure you get that right. Number three is, is rent to rent legal? It absolutely is. There's so many people who are uneducated to jump on the bandwagon and say it's a pyramid scheme, say it's a scam, that's illegal. It's absolutely not. Premier into it. They are a large rent-to-rent -rent business. They do not buy their buildings. You are exactly the same. You, you are presenting your business in front of a landlord showing a company-let management contract. This is not an AST contract, which is the standard use contract between a tenant and a landlord. This is a business contract. And it quite clearly states on this contract, your intentions for the use of the property. And it even in there says 
terms and use of the property that the landlord agrees to and signs. So yes, rent to rent is 100% legal. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Number four, what type of properties are suitable for rent to rent? So you can count out commercial properties, just mainly residential properties, such as two bed, three bed, four beds for the Airbnb model and five, six, seven, eight beds for the HMO model. That's essentially it. The HMO model needs to have HMO license and planning permission for you to do it legally, has to have those licenses. And that's the landlord's responsibility to get that. So that's, that's it really, is residential use properties in busy areas. That's the biggest clue really is don't go for quiet areas. So if you're in Cornwall or you're on a nice beachside town, those places you, you might think, ah, oh, holiday let, Airbnb, service accommodations. Yes, it, it very unlikely will not work. Your main clientele are in busy cities and large towns, not in Newquay, in Cornwall. All right. So don't get that mixed up. If you're thinking holiday let kind of service accommodation, don't think beachside towns. Think Coventry city centre you know, Maidenhead, <laughs> Birmingham, Manchester, London, Brighton, okay? Big places or very, very busy towns. Very busy towns. Cool. That answers that one. Number five, how do I find suitable properties? So the three most popular platforms, you've got Open Rent, Gumtree and Rightmove. And I would say in that order, in priority as well, in terms of success. Rightmove is very successful, but it's a numbers game. I made 244 phone calls to estate agents using Rightmove before I had my first deal accepted. I went on 24 viewings and made 23 offers. The only reason I didn't offer on one of the properties is because it was so, so bad. It was beyond fixing. It was so small, dark, dingy. It would just not work. And it was in a brilliant area. It just would not work. Or it was too high risk for, for me. So, yes, it's a numbers game. It's exactly the same with Gumtree and Open Rent. They are mainly directed at direct landlord. And obviously, right move is using estate agents. So that's where to find those properties. And you just use the filters. So if you're looking for a HMO, search between five and eight beds. If you're looking for service accommodation, search between two and four beds. I'd recommend staying away from one bed places. They are quite small. You are narrowing your clientele market quite a lot. They need to be in a very, very successful area for one beds to work. Number six, what are the financial requirements? So first things first, you'll need training. 100%. You cannot do this alone. It's such an expensive game to get wrong. Yes, I'm a coach, I'm a mentor. And obviously people are going to say, oh, you're only saying that because you won. I was a mentee once, don't forget. There's no way I could have done this by myself. I've only got where I am because I was trained. Not guesswork. So the standard saying is pay for your mistakes or pay for training. So the average mentoring, mentorship, I would say ranges between two and a half to five thousand pounds on average for rent to rent mentor, depending on duration and the level of one-to-one -one support. But I'd say that's the average. The other upfront costs are compliance. So you'd need PRS. That's £140 for entry level. That is the enhanced level. But I would say if you're starting out, go for the entry level. So that's £140 per year. You'd need spare room. Well, Spare room, ICO, PRS, a few other bits and bobs, website set up, your email domain. You're looking at about £300 all in, all right? Maybe a touch more, depending on the packages you go for. But it's not scary costs. Starting up your business is £12. An email might cost you £15. Your website might be £60, depending on whether you build it yourself or you get someone else to build it. So it can vary, but I would say on average, it's about three to £400. All right. And also, another upfront cost could be taking on your first property. So I would say you need between three and five thousand pounds again to take on your first property because you're going to have the first month's rent up front. Let's look on a worst case scenario first month's rent up front, deposit, furniture costs. It depends which strategy you go for. But 
you can negotiate it in terms of the deposit. You can get deposit replacement. So in a nutshell, a safe bet to take on your very first property and have it finished three to five thousand pounds. Number seven, how do I approach property owners? So again, you've got Gumtree, Right Move, Open Rent. Okay, that is where you, I would suggest focusing most of your efforts. And that's just ringing agents and using a phone call flowchart. There's many mentors that you can download their script. Mine you can download for free as well. I can leave the link to that in the description. So make sure you head over there and download that. So you've got Open Rent. And Gumtree, that is direct to vendor. So just, you can literally just copy and paste your same message. Hi, love the look of your property. Would have a few questions before I book a view and what is the best phone number to get you on? Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Send 10 of those a day. There is another way you can print off direct to vendor template letters and you can go on the HMO register and download the HMO register and ping them off to landlords. Either print them off yourself or you can use a company called Stamp. That's S-T-A-N-N-P. And they'll do it for you. It costs about a pound a letter to send, but it's well worth it. If you get one lead, that pays for the campaign itself. So there's just a few ways. There are a few other ways, but they are the main ways. Okay. Number eight, what is the income potential? Okay, this one's always interesting. I love this. Why limit yourself? Obviously, you're going to grow to the point, probably a breaking point. And then bring on, bring on a part-time member of staff to give you a hand, maybe a virtual VA or a PA, or you might give it to a management company if you want it completely hands-off. But what is the income potential? Depends how many properties you want. And depends, there's, there's no cap. There's no cap. I have students making over £10,000 profit per month, and they started just over 12 months ago. So there is no cap. You just grow your team and your income keeps going. As long as you're delivering an excellent service to landlords and estate agents, and you have testimonials from landlords and estate agents to go on your website, and you're reputable, and you're committed to it, and you're relentless, consistent, there is no cap to your income. It just depends on how many properties do you need or how many properties do you want. When, when do you want to stop? The average property will profit between 600 and a thousand pounds per month so how many properties can you manage and then how many properties can you and a pa manage two pas three members of staff four members of staff it just keeps going so no there's no cap number nine referencing tenants so when people are looking at rent to rent hmo they can be quite oh, i've never been a landlord i've got no landlord experience what how would i reference a tenant so there's a brilliant online tool called lettingref.co.uk this is where i screen all of my tenants it's really simple to use really simple the tenant fills in all of their details you press send um, survey to employer press send survey to previous landlord and you run a credit check credit checks are i think 10 pound 10 or 12 pound to run a credit check well you buy them in batches of 10 so i can't remember how much that was either 100 pound or 120 something like that to buy 10 credits and then you just run a credit check on each and every tenant highly recommend even when you're starting run a credit report on every single tenant you are screening yes you might be thinking oh i need to save a bit of money because i'm new just do it anyway it's worth its weight okay and that's it the estate agent will return their survey saying you know all green ticks and yes thumbs up and so with the landlord they pass credit check You've got the details. They can fill in guarantor, guarantor details on this page as well. And then they pass referencing. Done. You literally get an affordability rating as well, which can be a bit confusing because it looks back to front. The closer to 100% it is, the worse they can aff- they can't afford it, basically, because their wages are 100% of the rent. So the lower that, you're looking between 40 and 50% of their wages to rent read the thing and it would make more sense but yeah that's it lettingref.co.uk to screen your tenants very good tool number 10 what are the risks and challenges i love this question because it depends on each and every single person what they deem as a challenge um if you're if you like me yes i love a challenge but i still like to see 
is it achievable? I'm telling you now, anybody can do rent to rent. Anybody. As long as you're consistent, you obviously need the funds to back it up. Where you see online where you can do rent to rent with zero money is, is definitely not true. You can deal source, but you still need money to buy the fuel, go on viewings. You might, it might take you two months to find your first deal. You know, that's time wasted, so it's not no money. And there's compliance around deal sourcing as well. It's about £600. So you can become compliant at the same time as selling your deal, but still, do you see what I mean? Let's run through the risks. The risks are you take on a property that you haven't done the due diligence properly on. Another risk is you're going at this alone, but they kind of go hand in hand, due diligence and going out alone. Because if you're being trained, you'll be trained properly on how to do the due diligence. And that is not a step to be skipped. I, I stress how important this stage is to every single one of my mentees. Do not take this stage lightly. This is the most important stage. It's, it is the first line of defense in your business is due diligence. Get that wrong. And you might take on a property. Here's the risk. You might take on a property that only profits £200 a month. And then one tenant loses their job. Now you're roughly £450 a loss each month. How many months can you go until your business is in trouble? So the risks are you take on a property that you haven't done the due diligence properly on and you can't fill your rooms. But if you're my client, that will never happen because I stress how important it is. And we check, double check your due diligence. We check your contracts. The challenge is, is all, this is your mindset because it's a numbers game. Rent to rent is a numbers game. It's luck. You need to be on the phones to strike lucky. You might make 200 phone calls and have 20 views. So for me, for instance, 244 phone calls before, before my first offer was accepted. When you break that down, that was only four, just over four phone calls a day on average. So achievable. But it, because it's a numbers game, it would test you. It tests your beliefs, whether somebody will ever accept a property offer from yourself. It would test your resilience, your consistency, how much do you want it. i done a video the other day. And 850,000 rent to rent businesses just under the SIC code 68209, which is the main SIC code for rent to rent businesses when you're starting a business. So 68209, how many businesses have been started under that code? And it was 850,000. How many people are still active? Just shy of 16,000. That just shows you the percentage of winners. And don't let that put you off because to be financially free, it is not easy. You need to be part of the 1% club. You need to be relentless, consistent, and never give up, no matter what. Rely on your training, trust the process, and just go for it. That is why it's such a low percentage of numbers that win, that actually complete it and get on the rent to rent ladder. It's because it's hard. It's just like going to the gym and getting a six pack. It's hard, consistency you will not see results for a while and then suddenly you start to trust the process and then the end result is yes. That's why less than 1% of people have six packs because it's very hard, very, very rewarding because you feel good. So that's the challenge is you got to be very consistent over a period of time and people struggle with that because it's adapting your daily habits. 11, do I need contracts and legal advice? So if you're being trained and you're part of a mentorship, they'll provide you with everything you need. Contracts, calculators, terms and conditions, non-disclosure agreements, all of these types of things. So you don't need to buy them. You don't need solicitors. You don't need an accountant to start with. You just got to start taking action. The only thing you'll need to do is start your business, buy the compliance and start taking action. Then when you get your first property, I would suggest getting a, start talking to an accountant. But all of the contracts are there. It's basically fill in the, fill in the templates. Fill, in, fill out the template or use an estate agent that I've done company let before and you use their contracts. Okay, so no, you don't need contracts. You don't need legal advice. You just got to trust the process. Use the templates and start taking action. Number 12, how can I maximize my profits? Self-managing. 
don't give your business to a management company who are going to take about between 15 and 20% of the profits of the revenue, sorry, before profit. So it's a large proportion of your profits that are gone. So self-manage, do it yourself. It's, it's not overwhelming. I ran my rent to rent portfolio alongside a full-time job for a while. And then I got to a position where I was comfortable to quit my job. And then I did. So yes, you can do it. Yes, you can self-manage, learn the ropes, and then scale from there. That's how you maximize your profits. Another way to do it is make your property stonking, like so good that you can push the rates and the rent up. So you can, you know, the rates on Airbnb, because it's such a great looking property, people, the demand is higher, so you can charge higher. Same for tenants, because it's such a nice looking property, you can charge maximum rent. You know, because it's above average property. People are willing to pay for quality. So that's how to maximize your profits. The 13, do I need to worry about regulations and licensing? So great questions. Regulations are changing all the time and you've got to be up to speed with them. So obviously HMO have Article 4 in certain areas and they've got to have HMO license and planning permission. But we only go for properties with that already in place. And service accommodation... The regulations have changed as of 1st of October. There are now re regulations around service accommodation, and, right, and rightly so. This will eradicate the people in the market not doing their, not bringing the properties up to scratch and scraping by, to be honest. Um, so the service accommodation market will significantly improve and it will just be the professionals who are willing to do a good job running rent to rent service accommodation. And essentially... What you need to do is if you're going to take on a two, three, four, five bed property and run it as a service accommodation, you've now got to follow the, the latest fire regulations and it can all be found on the Gov website. Send me a message on socials and I, I'll help you out with that as well. I can send you the link and direct you in the right order. But essentially go on Gov website, look at the fire regulations for small paying guest accommodations and it would be there somewhere but essentially it's like fire doors no candles emergency lighting smoke alarms these types of things have now got to be in place so don't worry it's not a large cost to it okay you start with getting a, a comprehensive fire risk assessment done by your local authorities and it, they'll guide you from there because they would do that inspection in, in accordance with the new regulations so you don't have to learn it all straight away. Just get the comprehensive fire risk assessment and then it will all be clear going forward from there. Where can I get support or training? There are many rent to rent mentors. Me being one in the Rise Up Rent to Rent group, follow that on Facebook. Just type in Rise Up Rent to Rent and we'll be the group. Very active Facebook group. We offer support and training many free sessions, webinars, etc. And yes, there are rent to rent mentors throughout the UK. So depending on your location, it doesn't matter if you join me where you are in the UK. I've got clients from Newcastle all the way down to Plymouth. I have mentees everywhere and they are very successful. My percentage rate is very high in terms of success. So choose a mentor that you can relate with the most and you believe that, okay, I can put my trust in them and they will help me get, get there. That's it. I see two things I would say is make sure you can relate to your mentor that you'll be, you'll be speaking to these people for months. Depends on the package you sign up to, but make sure you trust them before you trust their program. Two things you need to do, trust them and trust their program, trust, trust their process and results. Make sure they have testimonials. You can see many people have got results. Once you trust those two, doesn't matter. Follow your heart. All right, cool. Are there success stories or case studies? Yes. So I don't, I get that question not so often, but sometimes. And it's like, I don't know if they're relating to me or everywhere, but essentially just look all over YouTube. There's rent to rent success stories everywhere. So the moment you think, can I do it? There are thousands of people that have done rent to rent and got success. Do you really think that they can all do it and you can't? So these are the questions I had when I was a newbies. I'm seeing all of these people do it. If they can do it, 
surely I can do it. And you can. It's just a limiting belief because you've never started a business. You've never been, you've never had a mentor. You don't know, you know, when it's the typical English mindset, you want to invest in something, but you want to see something tangible straight away. It's like buying a car. You hand over the money, you get the car. With this, you hand over the money, you just get training. And it's like nothing tangible. You just got to trust the process that you're starting a business. You're not buying a car. You're not buying a product. You're buying education to teach you on how to go out and change your life. So, yeah, there are success stories and case studies everywhere, all over Facebook, all over YouTube. Thousands of stories of successful mentees that have gone from newbies to very successful entrepreneurs and rent to rent. So if they can do it, so can you. I hope that helps. I hope that answers some of your questions. If you think I've missed any, let me know in the comment box and I will see you guys on the next one.